I talk to people every day about them wanting to move to South Carolina. And while I believe South Carolina has some amazing qualities and reasons to live here, I'm going to go over about 10 reasons on why you should avoid South Carolina. Stick around. So we are going to jump right in, but before we do, I want to share this with you because I do not want you all coming for me in the comment section and coming back complaining that I didn't warn you. I recently did a video about the reasons you should avoid North Carolina. And in that video, I listed off several reasons that does still apply to South Carolina, such as heat, pollen, snakes, alligators, and flying roaches, or palmetto bugs as they call it in South Carolina. So if you haven't seen that video, be sure to check that one out as it will help you get a better picture of South Carolina as well. All right, so let's get into it. First thing I have to talk to you about why you might want to avoid South Carolina is the flooding. People don't realize that large portions of South Carolina is prone to flooding. The low country and Midlands and even the PD region, which has been named after that Native American tribe, has been known to have significant flooding. This map was taken from FEMA, and as you can see, there are major concerns for flooding, not just by the coast, but there's a good chance of 20 to 40% flooding elsewhere in the state as well. And if you're a resident of South Carolina, I don't have to remind you about the flood of 2015. From October 1st to the 5th, these are the pictures that were taken from that flood. As you can see, the flooding of 2015 not only happened around the coast, but all the way past Columbia, South Carolina. It was truly a frightening experience for everybody in the Carolinas. The next reason why you might want to avoid South Carolina is because of the food. Now the food here is absolutely delicious from the low country boil to the shrimp and grits to the barbecue. In South Carolina, you get the best of both worlds. You can get world-class seafood, but you can also get that good Southern cooking. So if you do not want to gain any weight, trust me, I am an example of this. If you don't want to gain any weight, avoid South Carolina. Oftentimes when people go off to college, you hear about them gaining the freshman 15. Well, nobody really calls it this, but I'm going to call it, if you move to South Carolina, you can expect to put on the South Carolina 20. Look, I'm not judging because the food in South Carolina is absolutely delicious. Before I move on, let me introduce myself. I'm Sir Ashley and I live right on the border of North Carolina and South Carolina. And when I first moved to the area, I actually lived in South Carolina. I am a realtor and investor in both North and South Carolina. So if you're interested in knowing what it's like to work, eat, play, and buy real estate in both North and South Carolina, then this is the channel for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and tap on that bell icon so you can be alerted for when we drop new videos. Now, I do have to inform you about the bugs and wildlife in South Carolina. Yes, in South Carolina, you get the most terrifying creatures that North Carolina has to offer, such as poisonous spiders, snakes, and water moccasins, as well as flying roaches and alligators. But South Carolina is infested with the most annoying bug possible. And that bug is called a noceum. That's right, because you do not see them, but you're going to be itching for the next three to four days. And I'm talking about mosquitoes. I've never experienced worse mosquitoes in my life, so if bugs like how you taste, you might want to avoid moving to South Carolina. Or just invest, invest heavily, might as well buy some stock into some bug spray. And I'm not talking about the normal bug spray that might work for you up north. If you're going to move here, you need to talk to a neighbor or local and find out what they're using. Because I found out that certain bug sprays do not work in certain areas. The mosquitoes in South Carolina are truly vicious and relentless. So this is the part of the video that might make a few people uncomfortable. But I'm here to share with you the truth, at least from my perspective. Avoid South Carolina if you're looking for a progressive utopia. It isn't happening. South Carolina is heavily a red state, like deep, deep red. In fact, earlier this month in December of 2021, my family and I went to Columbia, South Carolina for a weekend to see my alma mater, the Georgetown Hoyas, play against the University of South Carolina in a basketball game. And during that weekend, 
the following events occurred. We were staying in downtown Columbia and decided to go for a walk and to go look at the state capitol. And we walked right into a Gates of Hell rally, which had a significant number of Proud Boys present at the rally. Now, if you don't know what either one of those groups are, please look it up, but they are far right conservative groups. And then also that weekend, I went to the Riverbank Zoo in Columbia to see the animals and Christmas lights, you know, just to do some family stuff. And no, that event at the zoo was not the most culturally diverse setting that I've ever walked in. But just walking through the zoo with my family, I heard some people yell, let's go Brandon. Now, if you're unfamiliar with that phrase, please, again, look it up. But it's a conservative rally cry. Why did they feel the need to yell, let's go Brandon? in my direction or my family's direction at a zoo after 7 p.m. at night? I'm not sure. Your guess is as good as mine. Let's move on and talk about the next reason of why you might want to avoid South Carolina. And that's because of the high cost of living. Now this might be weird or surprising to some because South Carolina is a poor state. According to a report from 2021, and they looked at data from 2020, South Carolina was in the top 10 poorest states in our country. Parts of South Carolina are absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. You have Charleston, Greenville, and areas right outside of Charlotte, such as Tiga Cay, Fort Mill, Indian Land. But the vast majority of the state does not enjoy the same quality of life that those areas do. Now, while you can buy a brand new home in Columbia, South Carolina, from the low to mid 200,000s, you will be paying higher taxes than the national average for other goods and services. Healthcare in South Carolina is considerably higher than the national average. So before you make the move to South Carolina, make sure that you check with your employer that they will provide adequate healthcare or pay you more money to offset the additional healthcare expenses. Overall, South Carolina ranks 49th out of 50 states for the cost of healthcare. Now this may seem a little bit weird to some because the cost of healthcare in South Carolina is so expensive, Yet, South Carolina ranks the eighth worst state in healthcare, according to the Greenville, South Carolina News. Since we're talking about the cost of living, South Carolinians love their alcohol, generally more so than the next guy or the other states. But if you want to go out and get a drink, your alcoholic beverage could be taxed up to 15%. And that is the reason why you have so much moonshine in the state. Well, the fact that Taxes on alcohol are so high, but they do make delicious moonshine right here in South Carolina. South Carolina as a whole has 6% sales tax and diner food when you go out to eat has a 10.5% tax. Oh, and to add insult to injury, if you make over $15,000, you will be paying an additional state income tax. That's a pretty low bar. If you make over $15,000, you're required to pay additional income tax. Look, I'm as shocked as you all because I didn't believe red states like being taxed, but it doesn't stop there. Depending on which county you live in, there's an additional 2% sales tax in addition to the 6% state sales tax. With all that said, there are certain ways around the taxes, just ask Jeff Bezos or Donald Trump. So when you get to South Carolina, find yourself a highly recommended CPA. Don't use your CPA from where you're coming from. Use a CPA that is familiar with South Carolina state laws. Now, if you want consistency and uniformity, then avoid South Carolina because the zoning laws as it pertains to property being residential or commercial is almost non-existent. South Carolina once believed that if it was your land, you could do whatever you wanted to do on your land. And most people did just that. Now, in recent times, zoning laws have been implemented, but some locations have been grandfathered in. It's not uncommon to be parked at a red light in South Carolina and see the following in eye shot of the traffic intersection. You will have a single family home next to a trailer park, next to a church, and then across the street, you will have a pediatrician's office and a dentist. Yes, I am looking at you, Rock Hill, South Carolina. If you don't like guns or fireworks, then South Carolina isn't for you. Here in the Carolinas, we love our guns, and that is never going to change. 
So if you don't like guns, you might want to avoid South Carolina. People in South Carolina also love their college football. So if you're not about that life, you're going to feel very uncomfortable come college football season. Actually, there's no real college football season in South Carolina. College football is year round. So you're going to have to pick your allegiance, either the University of South Carolina or Clemson. And no matter who you choose, people will judge you. Yes, driving here in South Carolina is awful, and that's due to several reasons. Tourism is huge on the coast, and traffic is pretty much awful at all times in those coastal cities. South Carolina also has poor infrastructure, so that contributes to the awful driving. And while people in North Carolina think they're NASCAR drivers, people in South Carolina drive at a snail's pace. And both, in my opinion, are as equally dangerous. Now, one thing I can say is that both North Carolina and South Carolina are known for their awful drivers. But in South Carolina, the worst drivers, the absolutely worst, all have South Carolina license plates. So North Carolina might be able to blame out-of-towners for poor driving. South Carolina, you do not get that excuse. As I said earlier, I've lived in South Carolina and currently live on the border of North Carolina and South Carolina. And if I were to ever move again, the first place I would move is to the Palisades. It's a community in South Charlotte, right on the border of North and South Carolina. But then the second place I would move is to Fort Mill, South Carolina. And no, I don't hate South Carolina, but I did want to give you an honest assessment of the state, at least from my perspective. South Carolina is like that cousin that you go visit occasionally. You love him, you're excited to see him, and you know when you see him or around him, you typically have a great time. But when you do see him, you're also reminded. You're reminded that that cousin is a little off. Something just isn't quite right about that cousin. And the whole family knows it. Do not act like it's just me that has that weird cousin in the family. You know what I'm talking about. But that's South Carolina for me. And I love the state. If you're going to move to North or South Carolina or even thinking about moving to North or South Carolina, please reach out to my team and I. We would love to help. I'm Sir Ashley. Talk soon.